algebra is a part of the great invention which we call mathematics. Other parts are arithmetic, geometry, calculus, and ever so many more. Before we look at algebra, take a quick look at arithmetic, which is the mathematics you already know. Arithmetic is the mathematics of number. You first learned about arithmetic by learning about numbers, and then learning how to write the numerals which we use to represent these numbers. Number is really just a brilliant idea which men thought of far back in the dawn of history. It turned out to be a very useful idea, and before long, men began to give names to the numbers. And then much later, when men began to use numbers a great deal, they invented symbols to represent the numbers. Here is the English name for the number four. And this is the symbol which we use to represent the number four. Since this symbol is a part of the system of number which was introduced into Europe by the Arabs, we call it the Arabic numeral four. The Romans used this as their symbol for the number four, so we call it the Roman numeral four. The Greeks used the fourth letter of their alphabet, delta, as the symbol for the number four. A numeral is a symbol which always represents the same specific number. In algebra, however, you will use many symbols which are not numerals. Most of the symbols used in algebra which are not numerals are letters. Letters are used because they are easy to write, but there is no rule about it. You could use flowers. Or a heart, or a star, or anything else you wish, as long as you make it clear what each symbol represents. Sometimes the symbols won't represent any particular quantity at all. For instance, we might make the statement that if there is a quantity which we will call A, which is equal to some other quantity called N. And there is a third quantity, which we will call B, which is also equal to N. Then the quantity A is equal to the quantity B. You can see that this statement is true, no matter what value is given to N. Such symbols, which represent an indefinite quantity instead of a known quantity, are often called general numbers. That is a good idea, since it helps you to remember that they do represent quantities. General numbers are used very often in algebra because algebra is the mathematics of relationships. The word algebra comes from the Arabic words aljar. which meant to put together or tie into a bundle. It was also the expression which the Arabs used for a doctor who set broken bones. The Persian mathematicians used the same words for their system of working with equations because they were always trying to fit a lot of parts together into a neat and precise relationship. Let's see how we use relationships in mathematics. Here is a rectangle with a length measured in any convenient units you wish and a width measured in the same units and an area measured in squared units of the same kind. There is a relationship between the length and the width and the area of a rectangle which is given by the statement, the area of any rectangle is equal to the product of its length 
and its width. Algebra gives us a means of writing this statement in mathematical form instead of in words. To do so, we must first choose some symbols. Because we like to do things the easy way, we will choose the initial letters of the words. L for length, W for width, and A for area. Our statement says that the area is equal to the length multiplied by the width. Now we have a mathematical equation, which is a sort of shorthand for the statement of relationship. We call it an algebraic statement. It's not only much easier to write, but it's much easier to understand than the same statement in words. Such statements of relationship are very useful in mathematics. That is why we call algebra the mathematics of relationships. Here is a statement which shows the relationship between something called x and the number 7. It says that x equals 7. It means that x and 7 are different names for the same thing. This is the relationship of equality. But sometimes algebraic statements show other relationships, such as x is not equal to 6. It would be written like this. x is not equal to 6. Or another statement which might say that x is greater than 6. Or perhaps that x is less than 8. Such statements are called statements of inequality. They can be very useful in solving certain algebra problems. However, most of the work in algebra is done with statements which show the relationship of equality. Such statements are what we call equations. An equation is like a scale with quantities which are exactly in balance. This shows that the two objects are just different forms of the same weight. There may be just one quantity on each side of the equation, as here, or there may be several smaller quantities balancing one larger quantity. This equation says that one large red disk is equal to the sum of all the quantities on the other side. This equation says that the sum of all the quantities on one side is exactly equal to the sum of all the quantities which are on the other side. In algebra, the two sides of an equation are actually different statements for the same number. Since an equation must always be in balance, if you add a quantity to one side, you must add a quantity of equal value to the other side. If you multiply one side of an equation by a number, such as 3, You must multiply the other side by the same number to keep the equation in balance. If you divide one side by a number, you must divide the other side by the same number. Here is an equation which has so many terms, it is hard to see any relationship at all. Let's see if we can use what we have learned to simplify it. To help us see what we are doing, we will illustrate it as we go along. We will let A be a square, B a disk, and C a triangle. Now let's put our quantities on a scale where we can see them. Our equation 
tells us that three A's plus three B's plus two C's are equal in value to two A's plus six B's plus two C's. We notice immediately that there is a quantity 2C on each side of the equation. If we subtract the same amount from each side of the equation, we will not upset the balance. This makes C disappear from the equation entirely, which tells us that this equation is going to give only the relationship between A and B. The next step is to take some of the remaining terms apart. Our arithmetic tells us that 3a can be taken apart to make 1a plus 2a. This does not affect the balance of the equation at all. Now we have a quantity 2a on each side, which can be subtracted. Now the next step is easy. We can break down 6b into 3b and 3b without unbalancing our equation. Now we have a quantity 3b on each side, which can be subtracted. Now the equation has been simplified until it shows a very clear relationship between a and b. Algebra opens up a whole new world of interesting mathematics. The mathematics of relationships gives us the key to many problems which could never be solved by arithmetic alone.